Welcome back to the lesson 8 of this After Effects series where we're going to learn everything about the motion path in After Effects. So we're going to start with the basics and then we will work on a small project to have a complete understanding of the motion path in After Effects. So first let's check out what exactly is the motion path in After Effects. So in After Effects, when you create more than one keyframe in the position property with different position values, After Effects creates a line joining these two keyframes. This line is called the motion path. And the shape that is being animated with the position property will follow this path. And when you create another keyframe, After Effects again creates another motion path joining the second and third keyframe. And now if I copy and paste the first keyframe, it is going to create another motion path joining the third keyframe and the fourth keyframe. So when you create at least two keyframes in the position property, After Effects creates a line joining these two keyframes and the layer is going to animate through this path. And if you want the layer to animate through a different path, then you have to change the motion path. And now let's check out how to change the motion path. So right now the motion paths here we have are simple straight lines. We can change the motion path over here by changing the keyframe interpolation. So select the keyframes and right click on any of it. Click on keyframe interpolation. And from keyframe interpolation, we have to change the spatial interpolation. Right now it's linear. That's why we have straight lines. And if we change the linear to Bezier and press OK, we get the Bezier handles. With the help of these Bezier handles, we can change the curvature of the motion path. And right now, the shape is going to follow this carved path. Now, one thing that you might have noticed is that the Bezier handles are not locked over here. So that means both the sides of the Bezier handles are actually independent. So we can lock these Bezier handles by again going to keyframe interpolation. So select the keyframes, right click on it, Go to keyframe interpolation and this time change from Bezier to continuous Bezier and press OK. And now we have the Bezier handles that are locked from both the sides. And when we change the inclination of one side of the Bezier handle, the other side of the Bezier handle also have some impact on it. And we have another type of keyframe interpolation in spatial interpolation, which is auto Bezier. If we select it and press OK, it is going to simply smooth out the entire motion path. But here at the corners, you can see two dots at the place of the Bezier handles. Now, if we try to change the position of these dots, it is going to give us the Bezier handle. Right now, here we have auto Bezier, but when we try to change the Bezier handles, it is going to make the Bezier handles visible and it changes back to continuous Bezier. Now, this is not the only way with which you can add curvature to the motion path. There is another interesting tool with which you can do that. So now let's again get back to linear interpolation. And this time we're going to use the convert vertex tool. So go to the pen tool, click and hold, and you get this small panel. And we're going to select this fourth tool which is the convert vertex tool. So after selecting the tool, when we bring the cursor near the keyframe in the preview panel, you can see how the cursor is changing. Now, if we simply click and hold and drag, we can bring the Bezier handle from this keyframe. Right now, the Bezier handles are locked. So if you press and hold the control key plus the alt key and then try to move the Bezier handle, you are going to break the Bezier handle of both the sides. Again, if you press and hold the control key plus the alt key, and then again, try to drag the Bezier handle, it is going to lock the Bezier handle. And not only that, you don't have to select this tool always from here. If you have the selection tool selected, then let's undo everything. Now, if we bring the cursor towards a keyframe in the preview panel, and press and hold the control key plus the alt key. And now you can see the same tool being activated over here. Now, if you click and drag, you can bring the Bezier handle from that keyframe. So this was all about the motion path in After Effects. Now let's work on a small project to have a complete understanding of the motion path. So here we have a long composition of the top view of a road through a forest. This car is going to enter the screen and travel through the road and then go outside the screen. 
So one way we can animate this is simply animating the position property of the car and add keyframes on the position property then rotate in each of the curvatures until we cover the entire road. But that is going to take a long time. So a better way to approach it is simply drawing the motion path and copying and pasting the motion path on this layer. So right now we are going to draw the motion path with the help of this paint tool. So you can either select on this tool or you can simply press G to activate this paint tool. Now with the help of paint tool, you can create custom shapes. In this case, we are going to create a shape and we are going to use that shape path to animate our car. Now let's create the first vertex of the ship and then let's create the other vertex over here in this curvature. And while creating the vertex, if we click and hold the click and drag, we can bring the base handle of the ship path. And if we don't have the base handle for a ship path, then we can press and hold the control key plus the alt key and then click and drag and we can bring this base handle. So we're going to adjust the base handle and now this corner is selected and if you try to continue the shape path, it is going to continue from this end. So in that case, we have to select this one. So for that, we have to first activate the selection tool. So press V and then select this one and then select the pen tool and then we can create the next vertex from this corner. And now we're going to continue creating the shape path through the entire road while adjusting the busy handles to have a proper curvature of the ship. Okay, now that the entire motion path is created, so now we are going to create a null object and let's name this null object car. And now let's open the ship path property of this ship layer. And we are going to select the ship path property, control C to copy it. And then we are going to select the null object Open the position property and control V to paste the shape path over here. Now you can see some keyframes are added and we get the exact same motion path with the position keyframe for this null object. And there is another thing that happened is that all the in-between keyframes are row across time keyframes. So that means when you select the last keyframe or the first keyframe and move it across the timeline, it is going to adjust the entire timing, keeping the proportion of the timing in between the keyframes same. Not only that, we only got the keyframes at the exact points where we had the vertex and the busy handles exactly inclined the same way. Okay, now we are going to select the car layer and place it over here on top of the null object and press and hold the control key to exactly snap at the position of the anchor point. And now we're going to parent this car illustration layer with this null object. And now we get the car animating through this motion path. But right now the car is not changing the direction while it is traveling through this path. So for that, we're going to select this null object, right click on it, and then go to transform, auto orient, and then we're going to select orient along path and press OK. And now it should be properly rotating along the path. So right now the car is moving too fast. So we need to slow it down a bit. So let's select the last keyframe and I'm going to drag it outside. And let's increase the overall work area. And let's preview it one more time. Okay, now we're going to add a little bit of drift while the car is moving along the curvature of this road. So let's place the playhead over here and let's select the car layer, open the rotation and add a keyframe. And at this position, we're going to rotate the car this side and let's place it over here and we're going to give the rotation zero. And then again, from here, we are going to rotate the car this side. And then here it should get back to zero. Again, let's add zero rotation over here and then rotate the car in this direction. And from here, we are going to give the rotation zero. So let's preview the animation till now. You can see that there is a little drift while the car is traveling through this curvature. And we can further slow down the entire animation a bit. So let's select the keyframes, 
and press and hold the alt key and drag the last keyframe outward and let's place the work area end over here and let's continue adding the card drifting with the rotation keyframes in the similar process and with this we have the entire car animation done so now we're going to change those composition settings and give the width 1920 which gives full hd resolution and now we're going to add another null object and let's name this camera and select all the layers just excluding the car layer because it is parented with this null object and we're going to parent all the layers with this camera null layer and now if we move this null object it is going to give a little camera movement and that is what we are going to do we're going to add a little camera movement over here let's add a keyframe on the position property at the start and let's move the null object and place it over here and then till the point the car is traveling the entire path we're going to move the null object and place it over here and now we have a nice camera movement with the car animation and next we are going to add some clouds on top of the entire scene and we don't need it to be parented with the null object so let's unparent it and let's select this cloud and let's add a keyframe on the position property and let's place it over here and let's jump on to somewhere around four seconds and let's move the cloud on the side and now we have nice clouds movement on top of the entire scene all right so that is it for this video i hope you liked it if you like the video then make sure to hit the like button if you have any doubt regarding the techniques then make sure to comment down below i would be happy to help you out and if you're here for the first time then make sure to subscribe the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates until then goodbye